Exactly. So can you please tell the audience, because I think this is something that directors and filmmakers don't really realize, especially us lazy um, filmmakers uh, and out-of-shape filmmakers, that this is a physical game. Uh, to yes. do this. This is not... Peter Jackson shooting Lord of the Rings with a with a recliner, a lazy boy on set, like he did. <laughs> Literally had a lazy boy on set, and they would like PAs would carry the lazy boy from place to place, and he would just sit down and go to Vili- Video Village. That's not this. So a lot of filmmakers don't understand that when they go down this road, how physically grueling it's going to yes. be. Uh, can you please yeah. just tell a little, talk a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I could add a lot to that conversation because it was in this film in particular. That's I, I agree with that a hundred percent, and that's true of I think like every film on this scale I've ever worked on. But this one in particular was so grueling that it literally took me um, the better part of a year to to physically recover. I got sick. I literally developed like um, I, I, I was sick on and off for six months. I was like going to the doctor, my skin was messed up, I was going to the dermatologist. We're shooting in like freezing cold weather with no sleep all day. Yeah, um, yeah, I yeah. was going to like the, these like sweat, like in Hollywood, they have like these sweat, sweat lodges. Sweat shop. Yeah, yeah sweat lodges. Like with yeah. my wife and like sweating like a pig. And I'm like, I'm getting better, I'm getting better. And then the next day I'm like vomiting. <laughs> like literally my body, my immune system was completely destroyed. I, I was more sick than I've ever been in my life. I'm actually gonna do a... Uh, an article at some point on my website about like just the toll it took and and I couldn't write it until now because honestly it was like psychologically damaging and and I, I was like how could I ever do this again and and you know that's why on on the, the next film you know I've, I've put all of these measures in place because I know how hard it is um, putting so much more time into prep putting so much more time into just making sure that the team that's on board is going to be able to um, make it, you know, it's, it's still going to be really hard. I don't doubt that, but like just some of the contingencies I can put in place to like not get to that point. Um, like it's, it, it was no joke. Like if I did another film like that, I literally think it would, it would actually kill me. Like it, it, it's, <laughs> I think you've it's, now, yes. you've purposely, you've, you've absolutely scared the hell out of the audience. <laughs> you've, you've told, like, and I had hives and I, my arm literally fell off. I had to attach it again. It's like, <laughs> I, I'm not joking. It wasn't that far off. And, and I, again, I don't mean to say everything's going to be like that, but it literally, in my case on this film, it was and it, and I'll blame myself for the way it was scheduled sure, the lack sure. of pre-production yeah, yeah, yeah. the pre-production was the main thing because like there were days where you know I didn't where because it was all guerrilla um, you know I had an idea maybe we're going to shoot somewhere I found on Google Maps and I drive there the day before to scout it and now there's construction there and then we have to shoot later that night and then it's three in the morning and I just got home I don't know where we're filming the next day and like I'm up all night trying to put a call sheet together because there's no AD so it's just like if you don't want to you know destroy yourself making a film yeah. I think the key is is just know what what you cannot handle at least try to predict that and then if it's money well spent like we all want to do things as cheaply as possible and that's great but like in retrospect like I would have way rather put a couple of thousand bucks on a credit card and had one or two more people involved that could have lightened the load a little bit so mm-hmm. it's not always necessary but you know, again, this wasn't a film where we're shooting it in one house with two actors having a conversation. If it was that, then that's, you know, a piece of cake in, in, in physically maybe, right. but it well, wasn't no, I, that. I'll tell you what, and this will be the last thing we'll do to scare the hell out of everybody listening. Yeah. yeah, on, yeah. on my first film, This Is Meg, um, I had this rig that I, I built out to carry the – this. it was it was a ridiculously big rig um, for the camera. It was, I was shot through the 2.5K uh, Blackmagic cinema camera. So I'm, I'm, I'm carrying this rig, right? And then afterwards, I develop a trigger finger on my, on my hand because I was gripping it the wrong way. I just had surgery. This is two and a half years later. I had surgery on my hand like – Oh, my God. Like literally a month ago. So like I can't from that same from, it just never went and what is it better now or is oh it no still... it's, no no the trigger's gone but now I'm like I'm in therapy yeah. I'm in like physical therapy trying to fix my yeah. fix my finger to kind of close you know I, I have perfect grip I can grab I can do everything but like if I go too cl- like I close too much it hurts because yes. I'm, I'm still healing I'm literally like four or five weeks out of the surgery but I literally wow. had surgery because of that so that's why the second movie I was like 
Austin, just you carry the camera. Yeah. I can't. I'm not. <laughs> exactly. I'm not. I'm not. Well, because you live and learn. Exactly. Yeah. And and I think people are so gung ho to just say. And and I'm of this camp. Like I preach this on my blog and and everything every week. But it's like just you know take a punk rock attitude. Just make the movie. Do whatever you have to do to make the movie. Like no one's gonna make it for you. And all of that's true. But at the same time, I think you have to think of it as like a long term career in the sense like you're you're gonna make a lot of movies and you know don't. Right do something that is going to like, don't, don't mess up your back so badly that like you, you can't make another movie for another two years or whatever it may be. Like, you know, you have to pace yourself, but, um, anyway, yeah, I mean, I, I again, I hope, hopefully nobody's too freaked out. I do want to reiterate <laughs> that a lot of it was, it was, it was so much just a, a personal, like just choices I shouldn't have made yes, that I exactly. didn't make, you know, exactly. but, um, but I think there's a version of that film that could have happened where, where it would have been a little, little bit smoother sailing. Yeah. And we're not trying to scare everybody listening. 